time for Children's Church. And if you will, take your Bible or grab the one in the pew in front of you and turn to 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. Once in a while I will intentionally not do a PowerPoint. It's good technology. I love it. I'm appreciative of it. But we need to uh, be familiar with our Bible. <laughs> Amen. So, uh, what I want to share with y'all today, and we're going to pray in just a minute, is uh, our start a series on overcoming faith. And uh, God wants, He's called us to be overcomers. He's given us the ability to be able to do it. And it's our faith that allows us to have the ability to overcome. And uh, that's what we're going to be talking about over the next few weeks. So join me in a prayer. Father, we love you. Appreciate so much how you minister in our lives and, and how you make a difference and have saved us and brought us into your presence. I, I am so grateful that even at the last minute that uh, there are those among us. I've prayed with some on their deathbeds. I, I, and folks say, well, that's no good. Well, yes, it is. <laughs> Eternity is forever, and and it, anybody, there's none of us can earn your salvation. We have to receive it by faith. And I'm grateful that your Lordship is available to anybody who is willing to receive you. And I pray that uh, you will touch every believer in this room, help us to increase our faith, help us to be able to walk with you in faith, understanding, Lord, that we do have situations that we need to overcome, but that you've given us an ability, a supernatural ability, to be able to do just that. So I pray that you will speak. And, Father, if there's a soul here today that's struggling, it, it, we're, we're all sinners, I understand that, but if there's one that's struggling and has not yet surrendered their heart to your Lordship, I pray that you will convict and minister life and let them know that they can walk out of here free and that you will be with them forever. In Jesus' name, amen. In 1 John chapter 5, John writes these words beginning in verse 1. So I'm reading from the New International Version. I'll quote the King James on a thing or two. But in this particular passage, it, it reads, Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Now, the Christ is the Savior. He's the Messiah. He's the one who came specifically, and his express purpose was to seek and to save the lost. And that's part of what we're called to do. And, and we're told here that everyone who believes that he is the Christ is born of God. Now, there are many who will recognize that he's God. The demons do that. But they shun. But uh, if we're born of the Spirit of God by receiving his lordship, then we're going to be with him forever. He goes on to say, everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. And then he says, this is how we know that we love the children of God. By loving God and carrying out his commands. And this is the love for God. I want you to notice that he's being very specific and very simple messaging. He, he's just following. He, he's saying, look, uh, it, you know, if, if you love, if you're born of God, if you believe he's the Christ, if you love him, and you're going to love Jesus. This is how we know that we love the children of God, by loving him and keeping his commandments. Now he's going to say this over and over and over again. Christ himself said this over and over and over again. That Verse 3 sums it up. This is love for God, to obey his commands. And his commands are not burdensome. I, they're not easy, but they're not burdensome. Smartest thing I ever did was surrender my heart to his lordship 
and then go about to serve him because I love him, not because I'm scared he's going to mash me, not because I'm scared he's going to switch my legs, and my legs have been switched, and he has disciplined me, and, and there's no question about that. Uh, yeah, it's not that we, don't, we do need discipline, but we love him, and, and to obey his commands is proof of our love, plain and simple. Now, you can say it all you want to, but if you're not living it, then is it real? And none of us are perfect. So I'm not, I, this is not a condemning message. I'm telling you, his commandments are not burdensome. He gives us the ability, tells us what to do, and then gives us the ability to be able to do it. And so, and, and there's such joy in that. Did you see the dentist saying, you, you just need to do this and, and it'll change your life? Well, it will. When we help people, when we obey God, when we do what he's commanded us to do, then that's the, a source of joy for us. And, and, and his commandments are not burdensome. He goes on in verse 4 to say, Everyone who's born of God overcomes the world. Now, y'all have heard me say this over and over again. I'm going to say it again. If you're going to be an overcomer, you've got to have something to overcome. If you're going to win a victory, you've got to have a battle. If you're going to win the fight, you've got to have a fight to win. And we are in a battle. Now, my battle's not against flesh and blood. It's not against people. Now, you say, well, wait a minute. I got some I'd love to sock and knock out. Well, it won't do you any good. <laughs> it really won't. And, and so my, my, my battle's not against people. It's against principalities. It's against powers. It's against the spiritual wickedness that is the devil and his crowd. And that's, what our, that's where our battle is. But everyone who is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. The battle is won, y'all. Now, it's not over, but it's won. Does that make sense? And so, and he goes on to say, who is it that overcomes the world? Only he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. So we go right back to faith. He said that this is the, our victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. And so we, we, we need to understand that. We need to understand that, that there, there is trouble in the world. Uh, this election is, is precarious to me. I'm not going to get political this morning. I will never tell anybody how to vote. What I want you to understand is we need to pray for a repentant nation, and we are not living in one. And so we need, to, we, need to, we need to be a source of light where we are. Remember Sodom and Gomorrah. <clears throat> he told Lot, he said, find me five in the whole series, two cities. He said, and I'll spare everybody. And, and, and a ten, they couldn't do it. He couldn't do it. So we need to be the salt of the earth. We need to be a saving factor. But I'm praying for God to move among us and let us simply see his glory in this earth. Now, I know it's glorious in heaven. Never been there. I, I believe God. I've read about it. But I'm not there. So I got to be here occupying, doing what he's told me to do until he comes. And he's coming. Now, he may, he may come back and get us all, and that could happen. I don't see any scriptural reason for it not to happen right now except the grace of God. But he's definitely going to come get me. In 100 years, I won't be here. Hey, if I'm here 20 years, I'll be doing good. And, and so what I'm saying is, he, in one way or another, he's going to come get us. And that's not a morbid thought. We're going to bury Miss, Miss uh, Vivian White, Miss Vivian Thompson White. My buddy, she was 100. <laughs> she went to be with the Lord yesterday, the same day that uh, my sister-in-law, his her baby girl, went to be with the Lord 15 years prior. That died on the same day that her baby girl died on, on the monthly calendar. But she lived to be 100. And I'm thinking, 
That's just wrong. You know, I don't want to see, be silly. I don't want to be trite with this. I don't want to say that we don't grieve. We've got to grieve. I'm going to shed some tears, I'm sure. And so will those who, who knew her. But live to be 100 and go be with your daughter. <laughs> I mean, you know. You know. And, 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 and I, I, again, I'm not trying. Death is an enemy. There's no question about that. <coughs> but we are overcomers. We've got some things that we have to overcome. But we have already, the victory has already been won for all who will receive him. He said, only he who believes. Who is, he, who is it that overcomes the world? Only he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. And so we need to put our faith into action. Now, <coughs> I memorized this years ago because... When I got saved, there wasn't an NIV Bible. And the King James Bible in Hebrews 1 and 11, 1, and, and you, you can turn there if you want to. But the King James, I can quote it for you. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Now, it, that's very interesting because if you take that, just that passage, first the first word in that passage is now. Now faith is. And I want to emphasize that because I need faith when? <laughs> right now. I need it right now. Now I've got enough faith that this, uh, that this stage is going to hold me up that I can jump up and down and not worry about it. I don't see that wood. Do y'all see that wood? Now there's evidence that it's there because I sure can't bust it. But, the, but, but what we've got, faith, is now. It's now. I need it today. And, and, and so hope is future. And I'm thankful for hope. My hope is in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. My Christ in you is the hope of glory. My hope is that glory exists. And I'm absolutely confident that it does. That he's got a home for me. Now, I can understand that because... You know, when you stay away from home for a while, you get a little bit homesick. And I ain't just trying to, to be an old gospel preacher where I'm homesick for heaven. But it wouldn't hurt my feelings at all, except I, I would miss Terry and y'all. But if I went home today, <laughs> it'd be fine with me. But what I want you to understand about faith is that it's now, that, that we, need to, it, we need to have it. And that it is substantial. Now, substance means that it's got something. Again, that's substantial. I mean, if that was paper, I could punch my fist through it. But I can't do that. There's some substance there. Faith has substance. You say, well, wait a minute. <coughs> how, can it, how can it have substance when, when we can't see it? Well, that, that passage goes on to say it's what? The evidence of things not seen. Now, how many of you have ever been to the moon? Any of y'all ever been? Nobody in here has ever been to the moon. Okay. But is it there? Well, how do you know it's there? You can see evidence of it. Right? I mean, there's something up there shining. How many of you have ever seen the wind? How many of you have ever seen evidence of the wind? <laughs> All of us. I mean, I can walk outside and my hair gets blown all over the place. What little bit I got, it just sticks right straight up. Y'all see that? So faith is it, 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 it's substantial. It's got evidence to it. It's not pie in the sky. It's not wishful thinking. It's not a fairy tale. See, this is based on the life of one that I have met but never seen. Do you hear me? He has changed my life. <coughs> he really has. Now, those of you, Mike knew me, B.C. Some of y'all didn't know me before I got saved. How many of y'all did know me before I got saved? Mike and who else? Oh, my, okay, there you are. Okay, more of you. Hmm. I don't even know why y'all here. <laughs> <coughs> he changed me. He changed me. And he, he didn't change me because I'm so special. 
He changed me because he loves me and he loves you just as much as he loves me. And that is a whole lot of love. A whole lot of love. And he, it's there for us to be able to receive and, and we simply, we, we just need to walk with him. Now, in, in, in Hebrews, uh, you're already in 11, possibly, one verse, verse 6. Go, go down to verse 6. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Do y'all hear that? If you, if you want to please God in your life, you must have faith. So without faith, it's impossible to please him. And he goes on to explain again, and I appreciate Scripture because it's so clear to me. Because anyone who comes to him, God, must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. He's a rewarder of those who earnestly seek him. And if we will, and when you earnestly, I mean, this ain't rocket science, y'all. If you are earnestly seeking for something, how many of you have ever lost your billfold? Am I the only one? Okay. Now, what did you do? You earnestly sought it. Did you hear what I'm saying? Huh? I mean, how, how many of you have ever had, you just could not remember where your car keys were? Now, I know I'm getting old and it's happening to me with a great more degree of regularity than it used to did. Now I blame it on old age. I, I don't know what I used to blame it on when I was doing it younger. But what I'm saying is you've got to diligently seek him. And if you really mean business, guess what? He said they will seek me and they will find me when they do what? Search for me. Say it loud, Colin. With all their heart, and I will be found of you, he said. He is not hiding. He is, there's evidence of God everywhere you look. And he's real, and he really loves you. And so what, what we, we've just got, we, we got to understand that if we will diligently seek him, and that is by faith. We seek him by faith. I've never seen him. He's never walked up to me and, and held me like Terry holds me. He, he's never walked up to me and kicked me in the shin and run off like Joel has done. That was a long time ago, but uh, he, he was a whole lot littler. I, I could just grab him then. But, but, but I know he's real. And, and so we live by faith. And, and he moves in our hearts. And so what we want to do is understand that our ability to overcome whatever we face. And some of you are facing some real battles. I mean, you really are. <clears throat> I don't know the last time Elton was able to actually get up and do everything he wanted to without his chest starting to hurt. It's been a while. And, and, and those are real battles. Now, I believe, and y'all pray, because he's going to get that rotor rooter in that artery, and they're going to try to clean it out and, and get, him, get him back to where he can function better. How many of you, I mean, we all have everybody in here. We've buried people that we loved. We've had sickness hit us. We've had financial situations. Every one of us have had situations that are tough, and we don't like it. And so we need to be able to overcome it. And I don't know what the future is going to hold. I really don't. Again, I'm not going to try to get political. But God help this country because we are in trouble. And so I, I, I don't know. I know that we win. I know that greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. I know that this is our victory that has overcome the world, even our faith and that we have faith, and that's what this message is about, for us to be able to understand that he gives us the ability by faith to overcome. Now, if you look with me, 
in First John, if you are, if you're still in First John five, back up a chapter, and let's look at. Uh, well, you can look with me, or I can just I can read it to you. Simple verse, just as clear as the rest of this scripture. This is so clear to me. He says in First John four four. He said he talked about in the in the first part of that chapter demonic spirits that were attacking. And he said, you, dear children, this is verse 4, 1 John 4, 4, you, dear children, are from God and have overcome them. Now, the them that we've overcome are the principalities and powers that the devil has arrayed against the kingdom of God. It's the kingdom of darkness. He said, you, dear children, are from God and have overcome them because the one in you is greater than than the one who's in the world. Now, listen. <laughs> is he in you? If you are born again, if you've received Christ as your Lord, if you are saying, God, I want to just live for you, he didn't say you had to be perfect. He said you had to be forgiven. And the only way you can be forgiven is to receive his forgiveness because the whole reason he came to this earth was to die in our place, anyone who will receive him, all of humanity. He came to die for our sin, and because it was my sin and not his sin, death had no right to hold him, so he got up. And he will come into the life of anyone that will ask him and receive him by faith. And then you've got an ability to be able to overcome whatever's thrown to you. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. And so he, he talks about this plainly. In Romans 12, I'll have it read for you can find it. He said, do not, Paul said this in, in Romans 12, 21. He said, do not be overcome by evil. Now, every one of us at some time in our lives have been overcome by evil. <laughs> I've had it whip me. I've been whipped by evil. But he, he, te he tells us how, how not to be overcome by evil. He said, but overcome evil with good. So somebody told me one time, he said, well, you just act in the opposite spirit. The devil is a liar, so you tell the truth. The devil's a killer, so you, you promote life. He said, 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 said the devil is... Is, is, is hateful so you be kind so we can act in the opposite spirit. We can overcome evil with good. You say, well, that sounds mighty weak. You got to be tough, buddy. You got to suck it up and, and just bust through. Yeah, well, there's, he fashioned a whip one time and ran him out of the tent. But he never was uncontrolled. He was always doing what God would have him do. And you overcome evil with good. Two more passages, and, and we're going to wrap up today's session. I want you to look in Revelation 12. We're talking about overcoming. We're talking about the victory that has already been won for us. In Revelation 12, 11, He said, they overcame him, talking about the devil. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. There's something that is more important to me than breathing. There's one who is more important to me than eating. There is one who's more important to me than any other thing in my entire life, and his name is Jesus. And the way that we're going to overcome is by the blood of the Lamb that was shed in our place as a sacrifice, and he gives us the victory. Now, the word of our testimony is very important, and this is something I really want to, this is so simple, I really want us to get this. When you are sharing with people who is the expert on your life? Who knows more about you 
than anybody else. You do. <laughs> I mean, it's so obvious. So your testimony, who's the expert of your testimony? You are. Now, if your testimony is that he has touched you and done something in your life and ministered to you, then in conversation, you don't even have to beat people up with it. They can, they, you know, you can just share, man. Hey, guess what? Guess what happened? Somebody sent me some money, and, and I have just prayed. <laughs> I mean, has that ever happened to anybody in here? Boy, it's happened to me. I mean, I, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, Lord, I, I need some help. And, and all of a sudden, somebody helps me that I didn't ask to help. Do you hear me? And, and you, all of us know those stories. All of us can share those stories. You can share them as, just as well as I can. I happen to be the one up here talking. But what, what I'm trying... Our testimony is important. And it's part of how we can overcome. So we overcome by the blood of the Lamb, absolutely. But also by our lifestyle. Our own testimony. And then John 16, 34. Y'all know the context. I quote it all the time. It's one of the most important passages in Scripture to me. He basically said, These things I've spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. Now this is while Judas and the mob is on the way to get him and arrest him. He understands that. He knows. He knows what's going on. He said, he said, I've spoken these things to you that in me you might have peace. He said, in the world you're going to have what? Tribulation or trouble or whatever rendition of, of it that you're reading in whatever Bible translation you got. But he said, in the world you're gonna, it, it's going to be bad. Now, how many of you know that's the truth? <laughs> yeah. We all do. But what was the very next thing he said? But, I love that little three-letter word. But what? Be of good cheer. He said, cheer up. Now, they fixing to kill Jesus. He knows that. These guys, they all going to abandon him. They all going to forsake him. They all going to be in a jam. He, he, you know. But he said, be of good cheer. Why? He's overcome the world. He has overcome the world. So, we overcome by that blood that he shed, and by our testimony. And as we go forward, I want us to fully understand that because I'm telling you, I want to shake this county up some. I do. I want to see some folks turning their hearts to Jesus. I want to see some folks that don't like me, that, 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 that would rather I didn't try to get in and tell them all about this Jesus and Put this trip on them and all that stuff. I, he wants none to perish. So I will do what I can to minister life to whoever will let me. And that's what I want us to do. That's what this church is called to do. I want to see a move of the Spirit of God. And I want to participate in it. And I want all of us to participate in it. Amen. Now, as we get ready for the invitational hymn, what's he saying to you? Well, one thing I know he's saying to you, he's got the victory. And, and your faith will help you obtain that victory. So where do you stand? Now, if there's one thing he's telling you to do, then why don't you just say, yes, I'm going to do it. And as we stand and sing hymn number, what is it? 307. If you want to do some business with God in response to what he is putting on your heart, why don't you come up here and do it? Now, I'll pray with you if you come to me. You don't have to come to me. You can just go to him at the altar. But let's do what he's called us to do, and let's be overcomers and make a difference where we are. Amen. Amen. All right.